Hi, my name is Sean Sanville. I'm a certified prosthetist. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to don and doff shrinker socks, gel liners, and the patient's prostheses for inpatients. First, with some of our patients, they do have a dressing that's covering the incision line, and we want to protect that to ensure that the gel liners and the compression socks don't cause any issues. So I'm going to add a sheath, which a white sheath, which you'll see with some of our patients to protect that. So first I'm going to pull the sheath on just like you would with a sock. Okay. And I want to make sure that when we pull the sock on that we don't have any creases and pull up the, top, the toe of the sock as much as possible to eliminate any of the space there so that it's nice and smooth like that. Next, I'm going to take our shrinker sock, and if the patient is still very sensitive, which most of them are, I'm going to use this coffee can to help don the shrinker sock. So I'm first going to take the shrinker sock, put it into the coffee can. I'm then going to reflect the sock over the coffee can and pull it so that it's nice and tight. We want to make sure that we eliminate as many of the creases as possible so that it's nice and tight like this. When they're brand new, it's going to be tough to get them completely flat, but do the best that you can to pull them. Now, when I apply the shrinker sock to the patient's limb, I want to make sure that this steam is at an oblique angle to the patient's incision line. Reason for that is that the seam could cause some irritation along the incision line, and if we go vertically, it could cause some issues on the shaft of the tibia. So I'm going to take the tightened shrinker sock, at that oblique angle, and I'm going to gently roll it onto the patient's limb. I'm then going to ensure that all the creases have been pulled out and stretched out, and then straighten out the shrinker sock, ensuring that there's no wrinkles in the back, and that the sock is fully pulled up all the way to ensure that we do not create a tourniquet effect. We want to make sure that the seam is tight along the bottom to ensure there's no space. Where there's space, it will allow tissue and fluid to collect and create other issues on the distal end of the patient's limb. So the patient is wearing the shrinker sock to provide some compression on the limb to help eliminate the swelling in the, in the leg. The patient will be wearing the shrinker sock at night if they have a gel liner. If they haven't been supplied a gel liner yet, they will wear the shrinker sock for as long as tolerated throughout the day and throughout the night. Okay, so I'm now going to show how to remove the shrinker sock with the sheath. So it's in order to make sure that we don't interfere with the dressing on the distal end of the limb, I'm going to roll the shrinker sock down a small ways till the sheath is exposed. I'm going to then grab the sheath with one hand and take the shrinker sock with the other and I'm going to just gently roll the sock down until it comes off. I can then remove the sheath and inspect to ensure that there has been nothing happened to the limb. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate how to apply the gel liner to the patient's residual limb. So again, I'm going to apply the sheath that we've provided to the patient to protect that dressing. I'm next going to take our gel liner. We're going to turn it inside out completely. So make sure that the gel liner is completely inside out and that we don't have the liner sucked in like this to allow space for the residual limb to go into the liner. Um, also make sure that it's clean and free of any debris. Um, most gel liners have a logo on the front which can be used as a landmarking so they know which way is forward. This particular liner is uniform throughout so it doesn't matter which is front or back. However, there are stripes up along the sides of these, this particular liner which need to go up the sides of the leg. So I'm then going to help put the uh, gel liner on. And I'm going to apply it to the end of the limb and I'm just going to gently roll it on to his leg. I want to ensure that I roll the liner completely up and uh, not to pull it on the skin as it will create some shear forces onto the skin. I'm going to have my patient move to the edge of the seat so that I can apply the liner 
all the way up to the top of his leg. Just lift your leg up. And again, I'm going to check to make sure that there are no creases or wrinkles and that the liner is completely smooth. Okay, so to remove the gel liner, I'm again going to roll the liner off like this. And I'm just going to make sure that the sheath doesn't move and we will completely remove the liner from his leg. Again, I will remove the sheath after and inspect around the incision line to ensure that there's no red marks or any skin issues that may occur from wearing the gel liner. Um, these gel liners can be very hot to the patients for the first few weeks of wearing them and they will need to get accustomed to wearing it. The patient will get very sweaty and will have some red marks on the skin possibly from itchiness. Um, one thing we found that helps with some of the itchiness is to apply a small amount of mineral oil to the affected areas. So hygiene is an extremely important issue because the patient is wearing this liner against their skin. So for washing, we've, we've supplied the patient with the washing instructions on how to properly take care of it, and they should be washed every night. In order to wash it, we ask that the patient rinse the liner underneath the sink and using the same hand soap that is provided in their rooms. Um, the patient is to work up a lather and then to rinse the liner completely, ensuring that all the soap residue has been removed. Once that's been accomplished, they can take a lint-free towel, pat the liner dry. After that, we will use the foam liner that's uh, provided with the gel liner, and we're going to roll the liner back up onto the foam, completely right side out, and allow it to dry on this foam overnight. Uh, ensure that the liner is not rolled down like this, as the air will dry out the uh, gel and it will crack and ruin the liner. I'm now going to demonstrate how to don the prosthesis onto the patient. This is the patient's prosthesis with the suspension sleeve. The suspension sleeve is going to keep the leg onto the patient's limb. Um, once the patients have begun active rehab and are walking on the leg, the limb begins to change shape and shrink. So we use these prosthetic socks as volume fillers to ensure that the patient has the best fit in the socket. Um, we provide the patients with two-ply socks, which are thin cotton socks and have no markings on them. We have three-ply socks, which are thicker socks and have a yellow writing on them and say three on them. And we have six-ply socks, which have six and are in gray. To use the socks, we will apply them just by pulling them right onto the patient's leg and just applying them to them. Do not pull or stretch the socks beyond their own stretch. We start with the largest socks first, so in this case I'm using the six-ply first, and then I'm going to pull the two-ply over top. Reason for that is that the two plies are a lot stretchier and are a little bit longer so they will contain all the socks. I will then take the leg, supporting it with one hand, and sliding it onto the patient's leg. I'll push the leg into the socket, ensuring that the bottom of the kneecap falls into place of the bar that has been formed into the socket. I then roll the sleeve up onto the patient's leg. Can you move forward just a little bit? I'll have the patient move into the end of his chair so that we can get the leg on completely. It is not imperative that the sleeve is rolled on as it won't be in contact with the skin. So if any wrinkles need to be pulled out, you can easily grab the back or the front of the sleeve and pull those out. I'll then help the patient down and ensuring that the leg is always being supported. So when removing the leg, again, we can pull the sleeve down over the socket and then gently pull the leg off of the residual limb. The socks can come off and just place them into the socket for safekeeping. And then we want to make sure that we pull the sleeve up and we can just tuck the sleeve into the prosthesis for storage. 
The reason for pulling the sleeve up is so that if the, again, if the gel is left open like this, to the, exposed to the air, the gel will dry out and get cracked and will ruin the suspension sleeve. So once we've taken the leg off, we need to remove the gel liner to do a visual inspection of the patient's limb. The purpose of this is to make sure that the patient hasn't sustained any type of injury. We're going to do a visual inspection of the patient's incision line and then of the tibia and as well as in the fibula tincture. There's no red marks or unusual markings that the patient may have incurred while wearing the prosthesis. As we can see, there are no issues with his leg, so we can reapply the gel liner. Okay for me? Yes. That's excellent.